Welcome Blazers, we are back with another video for YouTube. Now today we are focused on aerials, how to set them up, how to do different tricks within the air, basic stuff, and to be able to show you different methods of aerialing too. This is an in-depth tutorial, so please listen and stay focused while you are watching this. There's going to be a lot of tips, a lot of tricks going on, and you really do need to know this stuff when it comes to gameplay. But also, I should warn you, uh, aerials usually come with experience. So you would have to practice a lot when it comes to this stuff. You cannot mainly learn unless you're doing it yourself. And I would recommend going against bots in unfair matches. That would allow you to have pressure uh, put onto you when doing aer aerials. Bots cannot really handle aerials too well. And because of that, you can be able to score more often with them against bots. But at the same time, it also challenges you because you need because you're having pressure built onto you, a lot of pressure for trying to set up an aerial. Having that pressure gives you a challenge. But first and foremost, before I get into any of that, you need to know uh, which car that you want to play with. You need to have something that's comfortable for you. And also, this focuses on your settings too. So not just your car, but your settings as well. If you go to gameplay, you're going to see this general stuff here. This general stuff you don't really have to worry about. What you're focused on is mainly camera settings. Camera settings here can really depend on what you prefer. Now, what I would generally go about with camera settings is that you want you want the camera settings to be based on a general priority of your gameplay. You want it to be focused on aerial and ground. You don't want to have to change it at any point in time. Uh, once you do rearrange everything. You want to make sure that you're comfortable with it. If you're not, adjust it. You want to adjust to where you are comfortable. Because if you don't, if you're not comfortable with your settings, you're not going to play well. So yes, changing your camera settings can help you feel better and have more comfortability in playing the game itself. So that first and foremost should be said. Now, this also goes with your steering sensitivity, your aerial sensitivity, toward dead zone, dodge dead zone. Now this also, now of course everyone's controller is different, so you may have to adjust these settings too, to make sure that you are comfortable with that as well. That'll help you with car control, um, double jumping and dodging as well, so you would need to make sure that your settings are very comfortable for you. If not, you're going to experience some trouble in the game. Some of these things in the interface may also be helpful to you. So again, uh, make sure that all your settings are aligned to where you need them. That includes for video, audio, everything. So be sure to double check all of that before you go about any of your gameplay uh, for actual matches. And if anyone has any questions on anything, please feel free to let me know in the comments. And while you're in the comments, be sure to subscribe as well and stay notified by ringing the bell so that way you get notified when my videos come out and so you are not missing any tutorials or streams that come up so if I'm on a game like in a stream that you were on and you want tips on at that moment you can jump in and ask questions and talk to me and I can help you with that I love doing stuff like that Yeah, mainly, uh, once all your settings are good and your gameplay is feeling comfortable, 
you want to make sure that your car is comfortable for you. That is a big thing because you can suck at one car and be amazing with another. It's just something you gotta mess, you gotta play around a little bit with. So yes, aerials have a lot of background stuff that's going on that involves a lot of your gameplay and your settings and stuff. Now for training with aerials wise, I do recommend going with this one with aerial uh, training, specifically doing rookie, pro, and all star. I don't usually recommend rookie, but it's for people that are very, very new to that. I'm going to actually start on Pro just to give you an idea. I'm going to do a couple things here. So go into these trainings just for instance. Just to see if the ball is high like that. What you're going to want to do is you want to jump off on the ground via double jump. That'll give you better height when you first go off. Now, not the best at explaining things, but keep that in mind. Now, when you do reach up to the ball, be sure to be at the right angle to score the goal. You also don't want to have too much momentum on you either. Because by doing that, you might hit the ball too high, just like that. And it could end up making you miss the aerial. Now, stuff like this, you want to try to be above the ball. This is an odd one that they have you up. Because it doesn't provide a lot of opportunity here. I will try to hit it though. You want to try to position yourself. Double jump. Try to go for it. Ooh, unfortunately I almost had it. Main thing is positioning. If you can't get good positioning, you're gonna be screwed. Heads up on how you angle it, too, because it can really screw you if you're not doing it right. Now, if you line it up with the goal, you're good to go here. There you go. Now, don't forget, you can use air roll in the air. That'll allow you to twist your car around to where you need it. This replay will show you an example of that. Simple, but effective. Almost like a little flip in the air. Essentially. The bottom part of your car will hit the ball softer, so hitting it with the top of your car is key for fast momentum shots. Powerful shots of that. This one's not too bad. Easy stuff. Jump in the air, do a little twist, hit it, done. That's easy. There's no pressure here. Because it's all training. For here, you want to go a little bit above the ball. Fortunately, I didn't hit it there. When you're going off the ground, it's a little easier. That way you can angle yourself. Most of the time, you're going to get blocked. If you angle it right... I want to do it again. You get up in the air and you angle it right... There you go. And you'll be able to hit it right instead of going out. I don't know why I reset that, but I'm going to just do it one more time. Go up in the air, higher than the ball, be able to hit it downwards. If you're above the ball, you're going to come down and hit it towards the ground. At that point, we'll give you a goal. It can be very useful in, that, in, that close, in a close to goal situation. Same as this one. It'll show you here one more time. Simple little air roll trick there. Oh, and I want to show you guys something here. In my settings for controls and bindings, my controls are a little different than your usual. So my power slide and air roll is actually L1. So it's actually one of the bumpers. A lot of players recommend doing that, either L1 or R1 just simply because it's easier to access the air roll via doing that. 
And of course that's going to change your scoreboard, so you would change it to the button that it got switched with. But your power slide and arrow are on the same button, because they're two separate things. So it's not going to change uh, any of your gameplay via that. It's just a matter of you getting used to it. That usually has to do with muscle memory. Muscle memory is something that you can't teach. It is something that the player must learn on their own. So some things I can't teach you. Some things professional players will not be able to teach you. That is something you have to learn. Keep that in mind. For stuff like this, this is good to go up in the air with. If you're not hitting it too fast like that, you'll be okay here. If you were to hit it insanely fast... I just totally missed there. Angling, if you don't angle that right. Oh. Yeah, you will definitely miss. Aerialing does have a little bit of factors with it. I use air roll a lot. I'm not to where it's too complex for anyone. Now, heads up for shots like this. That may happen sometimes. That was beautiful. Double jumping off the air gives you extra height. Using boost right after that will get you up and going. And again here. Again, angling is key here. I was able to hit it in time, but I'm going to do it again. Timing is also crucial. Serials. Just one more time. Future reference. And again, you can miss. Aerials are not always hittable. Kind of hard to keep one going, <laughs> unfortunately. I'll try to hit this one. Timing is very key here. I didn't have the best timing there. Try again. Practice, practice, practice. That's a big thing. And this shot's not typical, but it can happen off a pinch. Off of a decently hit pinch from the player. If it bounces off the corner or something, it'll hit pretty high like this. Now normally this wouldn't happen mid-game, but can. Goals can happen at any point in time. And again, hitting it with the top of my car there, if not the side. Because those will hit harder than the bottom of the car. And here's this one again. Using the back of your car can help too. Powerful shots will hit into the goal rather nicely. Now I'm going to exit that. Because All-Star is basically the same thing, just a little bit more difficult. So what I'm going to do is go into training for free play and for this one because I like this map. So, so now I'm going into here where you can actually do everything yourself. So once you start a dribble, you want to come off the wall with the ball right after you hit it. That'll allow you to be able to have good control. You need to have good car control in the air, so don't go crazy trying to do anything. And you can even start it from kickoff, that's fine. If it helps you, try to face upright by using the air wall. 
basic stuff works, and it usually happens most of the time. You're gonna usually do a basic aerial to score. That's fine. You don't usually need a lot of nifty, complex tricks to score a goal. That's only if you're showing off, you know what I mean? Basics works too. If you don't get the basics down, you're not gonna score. But again, you won't always be able to score because of other players and stuff, so... Watch very closely here. Watch very, very closely. I'm gonna start a dribble off with control. You're gonna come off with the same speed of the ball. Being able to follow along with it and using your boost to keep the momentum going. Now remember, the front of your car, which is with the headlights, where the headlights are, I like to call that the nose. The nose of your car is pointing to the direction that you're supposed to go. Or at least that you think that, or at least the car thinks that you're going. That's where the boost will direct you. So it's your intention of where you're going. You see how I'm jumping off right after that? That's allowing me to go up in the air with the same height as the ball. You don't need to hold X here usually. Oh, I want to show you guys something too. When you go off the wall, I'm usually just tapping X. Because if you tap X, you're not going all that far. But if the ball is being hit a little bit more powerfully, Sometimes you might have to do a double jump, or just holding X on its own can help you. Double jump really make you go far. So that is something for you to practice. Just a simple one like that would do. Practice keeping control of your car. Pretend like you're going for an aerial. Just pretend. Stuff like this will help you. Oh, and another thing. The nice thing about aerials is that if you hit the ball too hard, it'll bounce off the ceiling. But that allows you to go up to the ceiling if you have enough time to do this. Yourself fall off, and you can do this. I'll show you again. When you go off the ceiling, air roll so that you're upright, put your noise point your nose up a little bit, and then do a front flip. Just like this. That'll extend your air time to where you can go to the opposite side of the field. Pretty cool, especially when you're catching up, like from here. So if you're really far behind, see how I'm feathering my boost too. You can even do that from the goal itself, even on the sides, like from the sides of the goal. It still get you kind of far. Still able to hit the ball. And again. And again, uh, ball cam. You can ch you can toggle ball cam on and off. So sometimes you're good with ball cam. Sometimes you don't need it. It's really up to your gameplay, up to your comfortability with it. Practice on and off. You don't think you need ball cam? Turn it off. Sometimes you don't need it. You just need to practice uh, trying to hit the ball without ball cam? Sure, go for it. As long as you have focus on the ball, you don't need ball cam. That's the only thing there. As you can see, if you turn off, you're not going to see the ball. That's what ball cam is for. Ball cam is to make sure that your eyes are on that ball.
I'm trying, and a lot of the time I don't tend to take my eyes off ball cam unless I seriously have to. I'm gonna go slow here, just a little bit. Jump up with the ball, air roll yourself, correct it, goes towards the ball. Now again, this has a lot to do with play with uh, how the player controls himself. Sound is glitching a little bit, and I don't know why. But as you can see, I can keep up with the ball quite a bit. That's called doing an air dribble. An air dribble is when you hit the ball three times or more than the air within a short period of time. While well, staying pretty close to the ball. Kind of like ground dribbling. Ground dribbling is kind of like the same thing. Just like this. An ear drag is when you're you're not letting the ball hit you multiple times. It's when you're actually constantly hitting the ball. It's where you're having constant contact with the ball, bringing it to the direction of where you want. That's an air drag. It also has to be in the air, of course. That what I just did there is a ground pinch. Air to ground pinch. That can happen at any given time. It can happen anywhere on the ground from the air. Just like that. It can be pretty simple, too. One of the simple tricks to do. You can use that to your advantage. It's one of those air to ground attacks that can be really useful in a match. Especially pinches, corner pinches. Those can happen anywhere. I want you guys to try this. Fortunately, you do have to have the right timing for this. Keep that in mind. Try to time well it. Oh my god! That was perfect. So check this. Time it. And do a flip as soon as you're about to hit it. Gone. And that's because of physics. Since the ball can't phase through, it'll just phase past. So it'll just increase speed dramatically. Just like that. It's really nice how that works. And even little ones like that. Players will usually not be able to control that. At least not at first, unless they have the right timing and the right positioning for it. Look at this. Angle it right, you might be able to get it. And remember, pinches can happen from anywhere. Anywhere. Oh, I messed up there. Again, don't be afraid to use, don't be afraid to use your boost wisely. And try to sustain your boost with the little pads too. If you can't get the big pads, don't worry about it. Get the little pads while you can and sustain your boost as much as you can. Try to learn how to fight without boost too. If you can hit if you can get goals without using boost, that's awesome. That'll really help you during a match when you really need that boost. Moments where you really want that boost but can't get it. It's like you have to fight without it sometimes. Practice these tips, practice these tricks. Stuff that I'm doing that's pretty basic for a lot of players. Now of course I don't have the best explanation again. I do struggle with that. But please take my advice and what you are able to bring about with them. And remember, practice, practice, practice. That is the biggest thing I can give you. Muscle memory and practice are going to be the two key things. Your muscle memory is going to, along with practice and experience, is going to already 
be more accustomed to certain things. So please keep it in mind that it will take time. It will take time, it will take effort, it will take skill. And over time you will improve that. You will improve that skill. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, the usual, let me know in the comment section below and I will try to help you out when I can. I try to help people at least within 24 hours of a comment if I'm able to. Sometimes I can't, but just keep an eye out. If I can't respond within 24 hours, try to wait at least up to three days. And we'll usually get back to you by then. Unless I have something important going on, that's different. Thank you for watching. I always appreciate it. Again, if you want to subscribe, please feel free. And if you are subscribing, be sure to stay notified by ringing that bell. Because if you don't, you're not going to be notified of when my videos come out. That's the nice thing about YouTube is their notifications for subscribed channels. Alright, that is it. Thank you for watching once again, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, everyone.